today's video is sponsored by Surfshark. Hello and welcome to another video. Today I'm in Adelaide and I'm heading off to Sydney with Jetstar in Economy. Now, something you might not know about Adelaide is there is a free Uber service to the airport as long as you're staying with another YouTuber. Say hi, Dennis. Hello. So I've been staying with Dennis for a couple of days down here in Adelaide and thanks so much to him for showing me some of the best of South Australia. I've got some of my uh, Farmers Union milk here and I'm heading off into the terminal now to head to Sydney. Thanks so much, Dennis. Have a great flight, mate. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Thanks for visiting Adelaide. Thanks to Dennis, I was able to see the best of Adelaide. From wine tasting to great food and even spotting a disused railway line which ran to Wollonga and is now a cycle path. And it's true that you can see kangaroos here. Here are some we spotted by a main road. The first time I'd ever seen one of these amazing creatures outside a zoo. I'm flying Jetstar 761 across to Sydney and arrived a couple of hours before departure. Despite a bit of construction work, the airport experience was completely hassle-free. Jetstar, which is Qantas's low-cost subsidiary, makes use of self-service kiosks to check in. You attach the bag tags yourself and take the bag to another kiosk, where you scan your boarding pass to send it on its way. The whole process only took a couple of minutes. There are plenty of places to eat and drink airside. Hungry Jack's, by the way, is Burger King's franchise in Australia and still uses the old 1990s logo. Something else from the 90s is Australian Airport's general allowance for you to bring liquids of any size airside. Here's the coffee you saw at the start of the video. Nobody suggests Australian airports are unsafe for doing this, and that makes me think a bit about how we'll perceive risks and precautions in a post-coronavirus world. Today's video sponsor is Surfshark, an award-winning VPN, virtual private network. There are loads of good reasons to invest in a VPN, but I find that leveraging lower prices online, keeping safe on public Wi-Fi, and accessing blocked content are the three top ones for me. There are loads of other features on Surfshark too, including an automatic whitelisting facility, industry-leading encryption, and a kill switch in case you lose internet connection. But during lockdown and quarantine, you're probably going to find unblocking locked content the most useful of all. It's annoying when websites won't let you look at content because of the country they think you're in. Turn on the VPN, select the country of your choice, and there you go, content unblocked. Head to surfshark.deals forward slash winging it for 85% off and three extra months for free. The bushfires in Australia were especially bad on this day and Sydney would be orange with smoke when we arrived. These sliding doors, by the way, can close and seal off a gate to the terminal to convert a domestic gate into an international one. It's simple, smart and effective. We're taking an Airbus A320 for this trip the A320 being the mainstay of the Jetstar short-haul fleet. I'll give you the ticket price at the end of the video, but today I was travelling using the Jetstar Plus bundle fare. If, like me, you travel with a bag, this is a cost-effective way of paying for it, and comes with a 20 kilograms allowance, no change fees, free seat selection, and a small food allowance from the in-flight menu. But you're still limited with this to 7 kilograms in your carry-on bag. And yes, they do size and weigh your bag, so be mindful of that. Boarding was quick and easy and sensible too. Passengers at the rear are directed downstairs and to board at the back of the aircraft to avoid generating a backlog of movement in the cabin. Quite a few low-cost carriers do this to save on turnaround time.
thank you. Jetstar's Airbus A320s are configured with 186 economy seats in a 3-3 layout. There's no business class on Jetstar. Most seats are the same, but I'd avoid the last row if I were you. There's a missing window. You move into your seat as quickly as possible. Place your smaller personal belongings Having watched the first officer do the pre-flight walk around, I looked around a bit and was struck by how orange everything is. You could well mistake this aircraft for one of EasyJet's back in the UK. Wonders, please, thank We departed to the southwest from Adelaide and climbed over the Glenelg area. I know lots of you want to know why I fly. Well, this particular flight was a trip back to Sydney so I could catch one of the world's greatest trains, the Indian Pacific, which crosses the entire country in four days. It's the best train trip I've ever taken in my life and the video is coming really soon, I promise. Meanwhile, back on my budget flight, I was enjoying the scenery afforded by the clear, hot Australian summer. Seat pitch on Jetstar is 29 inches, but the seating by manufacturer Recaro helps out quite a bit by having the literature pocket at eye level, which frees up a couple of inches of knee space. There's also a full-size flip-down table, which you can easily rest a laptop on if you wanted to. It's not that common to be able to actually see a geographical border from the air, but here's an example. This area of darker vegetation stretches for over 75 miles and coincides with the border between the states of South Australia and Victoria. As far as food and drink goes, Jetstar has one of the most attractive menus I've seen for a low-cost carrier, and pretty much everything in the menu looked decent and nothing was terribly overpriced, as far as I could tell anyway as a Brit. On this short flight, as I was travelling on a plus package fare, I was able to get a free snack and soft drink. I didn't really need a full meal as this was a mid-afternoon flight outside of the normal meal times. Jetstar has sister airlines, Jetstar Asia, Jetstar Pacific and Jetstar Japan, which all amounts to a really significant route map for Jetstar around East Asia. I've actually flown the Asian subsidiary before from Singapore to Hong Kong, and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. 
Approaching Sydney, the bushfires were intense. Over 185,000 square kilometres of Australian vegetation was destroyed. For scale, that's nearly one and a half times the size of England. The smoke was covering Sydney and combined with the hot summer air made for a turbulent descent into the airport. This flight cost me $139 one way, and that includes the $40 buy up to plus. $139 Australian dollars is about £75 sterling, and for a two hour flight with a little food thrown in, seat selection, and a whole bag, that's a pretty good deal. Don't forget to head to surfshark.deals forward slash winginit for 85% off and three extra months for free. Cheers, and I'll see you in the next video.